Hey guys, um, this is like uh, the beginning of the video, like a few items you will need for training. This is like a few training tips, you know. So, the number one thing for potty training, a timer. Stop watching timer. Set to 15 to 20 minutes. See how to set to 20 minutes, depending on the size of the bladder and the age of the animal, so, and I'll get to that later, dog food, or dog treats you could buy at the store, and, <clears throat> or you, you can make homemade dog food, so. and, um, clicker, which I made at home, you can use caps, anything, you can make your own clicker, you could buy it at the store, you could buy it on the internet, you could buy it anywhere, so you can make it at home. Like what I did for a cheaper option. So I got like a bottle cap and then jammed it. And it sounds perfectly loud. And um, it has a string so I can wear around it so it could hang over. Like hang. And then in case if I'm outside or something, I could train them. So th those are the essentials that you'll need for dog training. Number one, tip number one, praising. There are several praising techniques. I'll give you guys my favorite techniques. Liquor training and using your voice and food. So let me say my voice. I use a soft, calming voice. Like, good job, buddy, or good job, or like an exciting voice. Like, good job, like a hyped up voice when he's outside because he's not hungry and he's going to party outside, you know. Dogs have a tendency to do bad things outside, so we want positive reinforcements and positive things. Write that down on a piece of paper, okay? Positive reinforcements on positive moments. Like when he's sitting, laying down, or just doing something good. <clears throat> Clicking training. That goes along with the food, so. Like when you do your training sessions, you can use the clicker. And, um. You can use food. Click means food. So that's praising. Number two. Two. Potty train. Very important to potty train your dog. Spaying in the room too. So it could help the training process go easier and Um, so where to start, where to start, hmm. let's start with the, the timer, the one that I showed you in the beginning of the video, you know, 15 to 20 minutes, how old your dog is, like after, after they play, eat, and, play, eat, and sleep, so, like 15 to 20 minutes out. I set my dog to 20 minutes because my dog could hold his bladder pretty long. So depending on the age it is, you could like, like a one month old or like a month old or something. One, one month old, 10. You gotta start indoors. So it's ideal to start indoors. And two months, like when they're, f like when they, how am I going to say, when they're mature enough, they could go out. Like you have to wait till three months, I guess, till they start going out. So, and then you should start the timer from 
five, 10, 15 to 20 minutes. So, first thing you take your dog out, start from five. Wait, first thing when your dog's fully developed and ready to go outside, start five minutes from waking up from a nap, like waking up from a nap. After eating and after playing. So those are three things. And when your dog it's it's actually normal for your dog to go pee accidentally indoors, so it's ideal to start indoors, like make a confinement area. So that your dog could just stay there like sleep so so they can like you know wait till they're fully developed like three months so i i wait till three months till he because i think he he would be ready to learn to go outside like i got him for i got i think i got him like a month he was like a baby so I got him for like a month and then he grew. So it's ideal to start like training him indoors when you first get your dog. Like if he's like a baby, yeah, that's ideal stuff. So. And then when your dog is like mature, you're ready to take him out. And when your dog's one year old, you're ready to spay and neuter your dog. Um, that's tip number two. Here is number three. Walking your dog. So, why is walking your dog so good for my dog? Walking your dog is important so that you can like work out, you know. Instead of just sitting there and leaving your dog in the house and you running, you bring your dog for you so you can go bond your relationship, prevent uh, behavior issues, and prevent destructions of the house. Because when your dog has a lot of energy, you know what happens. Your shoes go bye bye. Or paper towel destruction, uh, toilet papers rolled out, toilet paper rolled out, and it'll be a big mess. And you don't want that to happen. And, and another thing. Aggressive is like, I'm so bored. Maybe, maybe, maybe I could just take take, take this anger out on somebody. Grr. Um, you know, and another thing, laying, play. That's like, oh, uh, like help bond relationships between you and your dog and prevent behavioral issues. And also give your dog exercise, you know, lose some weight or lose some of that pounds, you know, and work out, you know. You want to just suck out that energy out of him. And it's really important, so. So, um, number four. Um, patience. It will take time, it won't take overnight for the training. And if you keep brushing your dogs, especially when he made a mistake, you know, it's not gonna be fun for him. Cause the more you rush, the more harder it's gonna be for him or her. You know, if you want it to be fun, like, like school, you know? Nah, that's fun. School's fun. Make it fun. Like, it won't take... It won't take overnight. It won't even take weeks. 
it could perhaps take months so be patient number five training sessions how long should the training session be 30 minutes is ideal 30 minutes every day so it could be fun with you fun with you and your dog and make sure it's hands free. Well, I'll get to that later. Number six. Make sure your training sessions is hand free. You know what I mean by hand free, right? You know, most common mistakes that dog trainers use is hitting the dog. For a bad cue. You know, in the near feet, don't treat your dog like a child. Treat them like the way you want to be respected, right? Because if you hear your dog, he won't even listen to you. He, she won't even listen to you. Trust me, if you start continue on treating your dog, you know they're not going to listen to you no more. You know why? Because they think that if they do a trick and they make a mistake, they might get abused like those schools. Like those schools where children get hit and beaten just for making a little mistake. So don't hit your dog if they make a little mistake or they don't listen to you. Just, just like turn around. And just don't even look at them and don't make eye contact and turn around. Make sure your hands are by your side. Or maybe like, like wrap your hands around like you're mad or something. Turn around. Like if they bark, or disrespect you. Just keep doing this until they do your trick. Or you can restart it over. You start it over, okay? And just to, to uh, for future reference so that your dog won't be afraid of you and so that they can listen to you just wrap your arms and turn around and no hitting not a good thing to do and no shot collars no punishments because they will remember that because they do have good rem good memories so make sure hands free because Cause you know your dog's gonna gonna not do the tricks anymore, and not gonna listen to you because they they gonna think, damn, this guy is gonna hit me for for my little mistake, so I ain't gonna do the trick no more. Number seven, yes, seven, seven, heaven. Let your dog explore. How that door to explore? Because they want to learn something new. Now, it's their normal extent to use their mouth, nose, and don't trim their whiskers because they use their whiskers to discover things. Let them use their mouth so they can taste it like a baby. Okay? And they will taste, smell things, and look around, and go, and let them explore, like, so they can learn new things like their baby. Let them chew things, like a chew toy. Like, you know, when their baby, they have this tendency to explore, so... They're supposed to explore to learn, so I'm gonna wrap up.